In today's Game Week 27 team selection video, we've got a lot to talk about, like what to do with injured Dominic Solanke and the best captaincy options for this game week. Starting off today's video, we are going to take a look at how my team fared in blank Game Week 26. And as you can see from the score down the bottom, we had a pretty good game week. 70 points scored overall, 66 with a minus 4, and about 100,000 rank gain. So we're back kind of heading towards this top 100k objective that we've kind of set ourselves for the remainder of this season. I definitely think it's possible. Still got quite a few chips in hand as well to be played. So I think if we play those right and get lucky with a few captaincy picks, we're definitely going to break into that 100k. But this week, it was a crucial week off the back of three consecutive red arrows. Sorry, we've pulled it back. We've got a green. And as you can see, there were some very, very special performers in this side. Phil Foden with a goal. Very happy for him. Saka again picking up a goal for Arsenal. Jared Bowen being the key man, a hat-trick for him. I wasn't expecting too much. I think it's been about six or seven blank game weeks, well, blank kind of point scoring weeks for him in a row. So it was nice to get a hat trick. It fully rewarded my decision to keep him for this game week. He was one of the contenders I was thinking about bringing out last week. I kept with him. I thought if I'm not going to play the free hit in 29, I need Jared Bowen. And he well and truly delivered for me there. So very, very happy I did keep Bowen. And that decision has paid off. Watkins as well with a goal. He continues his excellent run up from Front for Aston Villa as well. Erling Haaland on the captaincy, it didn't quite work out. I think the other option I was toying with was Bukayo Saka, but I think in my mind, I was always just going to keep it safe and obvious this week. Obviously, future double game weeks coming up and blank game weeks. I think there's the room that potentially we can go elsewhere with our captaincies, but I kept it smart, I kept it simple, and Haaland at least did get an attacking return. He didn't blank, but overall, it wasn't an amazing performance. Outside of those key performers, there wasn't too much to talk about. Odegaard was one of my transfers in, and Senesi, both of them picking up three points combined. Not great, especially Odegaard in a 4-0 win for Arsenal, only to come away with two points is a little bit disappointing. I did sell him for KDB as well, and the fact that he's just gone and got four assists in the FA Cup is absolutely murder for me. So hopefully this decision does pay dividends, but we will have to see in the kind of upcoming game weeks whether or not that decision is going to work. But overall, blank game week 26 was pretty positive for me. It's got us back on the green arrow. It's got us back on the good trajectory. So hopefully we can continue that into game week 27. Before we dive into the team selection, obviously we have to talk about blank game week 29. All the FA Cup fixtures are now finished, so that game week has been confirmed. There are four fixtures taking place that game week. Luton versus Nottingham Forest, West Ham versus Aston Villa, Fulham versus Tottenham, and Burnley versus Brentford. That, ladies and gentlemen, looks like a very, very stinky game week. There was a lot of promise. Obviously, if Chelsea lost, they would have played Arsenal. That would have been a great fixture. If Manchester United had lost tonight they would have been playing Sheffield United would have also been a great fixture for this week but overall it looks like a pretty honky game week and I think for a lot of FPL managers they are going to be looking to hit that free hit button for me personally I think I might be able to get eight or nine players out without using the free hit and I think personally I don't think I'm going to be using the free hit for that game week. Obviously, I've got Doherty, I've got Jared Bowen, I've got Ariola, I've got Watkins, I've got Konza, uh, I've also got Charlie Taylor. So that's six already. Then probably going to be looking to maybe get Son and Porro in over the next few weeks. So there's another two to get me up to eight. And then maybe take a minus four in game week 29, depending on the Solanke situation. Maybe we go get Ivan Tony. Maybe we go get Carlton Morris with the double as well. So realistically, I can probably probably get eight or nine players out there so for me I don't think it's necessarily worth free hitting but I think for a lot of people they're probably looking at like one or two players and don't really fancy kind of planning their transfers all around this blank game week because realistically a lot of the teams you don't want to hold these assets long term you're obviously looking at the likes of Burnley, Fulham, just not great teams to hold long term. Obviously, Luton have got the double, but then again, Forest. Like, there's just not a lot of teams here that you want to have kind of long term assets holding on. So, I think for a lot of people, they are going to be free hitting. But, like I said, now we know the game week 29 fixtures. Let's bear that in mind with our future transfer plans and our potential chip strategies. If you've got any questions about that game week and what to do with this week and maybe planning, leave it in the comments and I will try and help you out. And before we get into my team selection, I just want to say that we're trying to hit 5,000 subscribers on the channel. So if you do want to help me hit that goal, be sure to like, comment and subscribe 
That one, of course, being the main one to help us hit that goal. Right, let's start off with our defensive players. Obviously, we're going to start off with Ariola in goal. My other goalkeeper is Turner. I'm not going to make a defensive transfer. And like I said in the last section, I'm very happy to hold Ariola as well and my West Ham players because realistically, they're going to feature in game week 29, that blank game week. And like I said, I think my trip chip strategy is going to be just to kind of use my transfers and kind of dead end the team in or see what it's looking like for future weeks. I'm not quite kind of identify what the plan is going to look like but at the moment for me I think I am going to not use the free hit so Ariola is going to stay in this team. Moving into the back line we're obviously going to start off with Gabriel. Great fixture for them. Sheffield United away. My only concern is Justin Timber is starting to return to training so maybe over the next few weeks we are going to see a little bit of rotation maybe a little bit of shuffling around in that Arsenal back line. Champions League football coming up for them. The second leg against Porto. So yeah there might be some rotation in that Arsenal defence that definitely could be one to keep an eye on but I think at the moment he's still just doing individual training so probably a few weeks away maybe by that point we've already wildcard in and Gabriel is no longer with us but for game week 27 I think he's just a very smart player to have in here Sheffield United away hopefully he can get himself a goal they concede a lot of opportunities from set plays he's an absolute maestro so is Declan Rice at whipping in corners and Arsenal's overall kind of set pieces this season I think it's absolutely brilliant what they're doing so hopefully a clean sheet and maybe a goal would be very nice for Gabriel moving on to our next defender it is going to be Doherty he's got Aston Villa I'm not expecting too much if we get news that Konza is fit he's been back in training today if we get news that he's fit fully available and going to play I probably am just going to put Conza in there and bench Doherty. I can't really see too much happening in that game other than an Aston Villa win. So I don't realistically want to play him. I obviously don't want to play Charlie Taylor if Dominic Solanke's fit as well. He's my other defender on the bench. If Dom's not fit, maybe one point Charlie makes his way into this team as well if Ezri Conza isn't. But like I said, once we get press conference updates, that will obviously impact the way this team is looking. Moving on to add that final defender, it is going to be Senesi. Uh, start of the Bournemouth good fixture run. If you are looking for any players to go and invest in this week, I probably would recommend Bournemouth players because their run is absolutely ridiculous. Despite the blank, they've still got some of the best games in coming up out of anybody else in the Premier League. Starting off in game week 27, Burnley away. Hopefully he can get himself a clean sheet away at Turf Moor. Right, let's move on into our midfield. Phil Foden is still here, obviously, after Manchester City's double in game week 25. 11 points for him in game week 26. I think I'm going to stick with him for the United derby as well. Obviously, we've removed KDB, but I still fancy uh, City to do extremely well in that game. I'm not too keen on Son. Son is the player that will replace Phil Foden probably next week when uh, City do play Liverpool but I just don't fancy Son this week Crystal Palace that new manager bounce I think that's probably going to have a little bit of an impact maybe I'm just overthinking it and maybe I should just make the move from Son to Foden this week but I think for now I'm just going to stick with Phil Foden off the back of that 11 pointer maybe it's that little bit of recency bias coming into factor maybe influencing my decision not to go for, for, uh, for, for Son and keep Foden in but I think Having two transfers next week is going to be more beneficial for me and my side. Moving on to our two Arsenal boys. Obviously, Martin Odegaard was my purchase last week. We've kept with him. Hopefully, he can deliver. He's a pretty consistent player. Pretty uh, good with the minutes as well. So, against Sheffield United, the worst team in the league, you would expect at least him to be involved in something. An assist, a goal would be absolutely brilliant. Currently, we do have the armband on Bakayo Saka. I think he's one of the top candidacy, uh, captaincy choices for this this week a top candidate for me obviously I'm potentially still swayed after that Erling Haaland monster haul against Luton five goals for him absolutely decimate, decimated them United defensively as well not looking the best so maybe we go that way maybe we don't I think Saka though is a great option he's been absolutely killing it over the past five game weeks seven goals for him during that time period looks very good looks very consistent on penalties as well so uh, I think he is probably the wise choice to go for for this game week. Finishing up is going to be Jared Bowen. Like I said, he's now going to stay in this team with us not planning on free hitting in 29. 
Obviously, off the back of that hat trick, I'm not expecting it against uh, again against Everton. But you know what? We never know with Jared Bowen. I absolutely love the man. And yes, there will be a rain dance coming. Do not worry about that one. Right, let's move on to our three forwards. And obviously, we have to start off by talking about Dominic Solanke. It has been revealed that he has picked up a potential knee injury. And there is going to be a scan on that. So hopefully, we can get some uh, positive or negative news kind of about his injury situation before the game week 27 deadline. Because... Obviously, if he's ruled out for a few weeks, I think a lot of us will be looking to sell him. I definitely will be looking to get rid of him. Maybe not this week, maybe next week for Carlton Morris with that double and then featuring in the blank. I think that's probably the way that I would go there. But I think if we get maybe like unspecified news, maybe it's like a week, I think I'd probably still hold him and hope for the best that he can feature in that double because he is Bournemouth's key man. He is their key danger man. So I think for the moment, let's wait and see till we get the press conferences, see what information we can do and then that will help us with our Dominic Slanky situation. Ollie Watkins is going to be our next forward. Again, a very strong captaincy choice. And the high line that Luton are playing at the moment, they're 19th for XG conceded over the past five game weeks as well. I have been tempted to put the armband on Ollie Watkins. Four goals, three assists for him over the past five game weeks. Him and Villa have been cooking and getting back to their best. So I definitely think he could be an option. That may be on the deadline. I do potentially switch to Ollie Watkins. And then finishing up is, of course, Erling Haaland, like we spoke about. Again, one of those players that I definitely think would be a captaincy option. He's always bagging goals, isn't he? Always picking up assists. Like I said in a few videos ago, I do feel he is on the cusp of potentially exploding. Unfortunately, that explosion did come in the FA Cup and not in the Premier League with FPL. But, you know, beggars can't be choosers. Maybe he does it against United as well. Maybe kind of makes a, a statement to the rest of the league. Who knows? It definitely could happen. So I think he is also in contention for that potential armband. But for the moment... And with kind of my thought process, I am thinking Bakayo Saka. Arsenal looking really good at the moment. Six games unbeaten for them. Putting teams to the sword. Top for XG. Top for XG conceded as well. So really good position for them against one of the worst sides in the league. Let's have a quick run through of the bench. Turner, nothing. Garnacho is there if we need him. Uh, I'm very happy just to have him on the bench. We spoke about Konza and Taylor as well. Hopefully, Konza, we do get some more positive injury news around him. And if he can feature this week, I definitely feel the team does look in a lot stronger of a position. If you've got any questions about your team for this game week or any game weeks in general, do get them down in the comments section below. But thank you very much for watching today, ladies and gentlemen, and good luck this game week.